Hi, my name is Yussi Salavar, and I am one of the co-founders and a managing partner of Asia for Antler. We are coming to you from Singapore and to all of our investors, partners, advisors, and most of all founders, welcome to the Antler Southeast Asia Demo Day. For those of you joining us for the first time, Antler is a global early stage VC headquartered in Singapore. We are building the defining technology companies of tomorrow through our global early stage investment platform. Currently, we are present in most major startup hubs in the world and are growing. We are currently present in 14 locations with our latest additions in Berlin and Copenhagen. In Southeast Asia, we have expanded into Vietnam. Serial entrepreneur and former Zalora country head Eric Johnson has joined Antler as a partner. He will run the operation out of Ho Chi Minh City. I'm Pooja Barwani, the Vice President of Marketing and PR for Antler in Southeast Asia. Welcome to our demo day. Southeast Asia's startup ecosystem has shown incredible resilience this last 18 months, despite the pandemic's economic impact. VC funding in Southeast Asia is expected to have a record year in 2021, with startups in the region raising $6 billion of VC funding in the first quarter alone. At Antler Globally, we have invested in 58 new companies. These exceptional teams are working on building for a future where tech is shaping and changing the way we work, live, socialize and learn. After 535 hours of interviews, 190 founders were selected from over 4,500 applications. Some interesting statistics. 72% of them have worked in a startup before. 59% of them have previously founded a company and 12% exited a company as a founder or executive. Over the last six months, the following companies from the Southeast Asia portfolio have shown significant traction. Brick, a leading fintech API provider for Southeast Asia, raised their seed round of 1.9 million from top Silicon Valley funds and fintech founders barely two weeks after their demo day. Locard, a cloud-based plug-and-play solution for global e-commerce fulfillment, recently raised $4.9 million in a seed funding round led by Sequoia Capital's Surge program. Brethonics, a health tech startup behind the 60-second COVID breath test, has received approval for commercial use in Singapore and Malaysia. Before we hear the first pitch, we would like to say thank you to our event partners, Enterprise Singapore, Startup SG, and our media partners, KR Asia and Oasis. We would also like to thank our regional legal partners, Linklaters and Watson, Farley and Williams for supporting our portfolio of companies in the region. After each pitch, please click on the Get in Touch button for the startup you would like to connect with. You can provide feedback, express your interest in investing, collaborating or becoming their next customer. To kick off, we are going to hear from Samir Kadepan of Wisley. Wisley is a curated knowledge sharing and connections platform built for professionals and entrepreneurs. They get the best insights to their questions answered intelligently and efficiently through the smart platform. Take it away, Samir. Hi, this is Samir, co-founder of Wisley. Wisley is where no business question goes unanswered. We're transforming the way we solve professional and business problems, democratizing it so that every professional can be more successful. So let's look at how you solve your problems today. Well, we all know we go to our own networks. We go to social media or communities and local groups. While the world seems connected, it's disjointed at the same time. All these methods have limitations, are time consuming, open-ended, leading to wrong connections, spamming, and no incentives for answerers. So let's look at how Wisley solves this. Well, the first thing, we help you put all your questions and responses in one place for future references. Increase your reach and targeted audience to answer. With our voice reply, platform currency, and expert panels, we make it more structured, easy, and rewarding for all users to reply, thereby driving faster response times, better connections, and curated answers. So we would always like to explain ourselves as Quora meets LinkedIn intelligently to solve business problems. So that's how easy it is. Our early launch is focused for the startup ecosystem. 
And the reasons are obvious. They have a lot of questions, they need right answers, and they need right connections. All of that, again, at the right time. Wisley intends to solve all the three, making startups more successful and fast track to their growth. Our product is available as a web app and works on mobile as well as desktop. We've also made it easy for startup communities, VCs, incubators, and accelerators to join the platform and bring their existing communities on the platform in a secure way. For the product, we have a very large addressable market. That's about 722 million professionals globally. But our current focus will be on the startup ecosystem, reaching out to a 10.5 million user base. We intend to capture a 10% of this market share in the next two to three years, with a potential to earn about $163 million in revenue. So let's look how Wizzly makes money. Our first thing is Wizzlings, a platform currency, allowing everyone to earn while they contribute on the platform and burn when you actually need to get your tasks done to be on the platform. At the same time, we are going to introduce SaaS revenue models for experts, communities, and businesses for excess of more features on the platform. To run this, we are a great bunch of co-founders. With over 14 years of my experience in startup domain, having founded two startups, done multi-million in revenues, raised multi-million dollars in funding, and executed product in teams over multi-countries of 150 people plus. My co-founder couple has a great professional career of 16 years in consumer experience in UI UX and with leading companies in Australia. So we know the space, we know the right inroads, and we know how to scale the startup domain. So for the first version, we already have 3,500 users queued up to go live on our 25th of July, along with the two leading communities signed up for our platform. We intend to touch 250,000 users as we bring more expert tools to scale the user base 250,000 and 1 million engagements on the platform. And here is to our grand vision. Well, to search, you Google it. But to solve, you Wesley it. With that, to join us in this journey or to participate in our future funding rounds, please reach out to us on this email. And always remember to solve just Wesley it. Next up, we have Found and Seek. They are building solutions for businesses to manage their equipment along the circular economy. Michelle Idem will tell you about the platform. Hello, I'm Michelle, co-founder of Found and Seek, where we're transforming business sustainability via the circular economy. Prior to Antler, I have 15 years of experience as a technical manager in manufacturing and construction. Well, one of my biggest frustrations was the thousands of hours and millions of dollars wasted trying to manage and dispose of equipment. And I'm not alone. We've conducted over 150 interviews, from purchasing directors to project engineers, from CFOs to lab managers. And they all said the same thing. They're losing money. And that's because today's equipment management solutions are disconnected, time-consuming, and unsustainable. Whether you're a factory in Vietnam or a lab in the UK, you're managing your equipment across multiple spreadsheets and hard to use software, which means you often don't know what you have, let alone where it is. This leads to wasted capital via duplicate purchases and unused equipment. When it comes to end of use, sustainable disposable and repurposed uses are often unknown or difficult. And that's where we come in. Found and Seek offers an all-in-one cloud-based mobile-enabled platform that helps you not only visualize, but also manage your equipment, including depreciation and sustainability reporting. More importantly though, we are determined to disrupt the misconception that sustainability needs to cost more or be more difficult. And that's why we offer sharing and repurposing options via our in-app booking feature, as well as our B2B marketplace for reselling and leasing. Our primary revenue comes in the form of our SaaS subscriptions, and we also collect service fees for both marketplace and partnership transactions. In terms of market, the potential is massive. It's because we're going after both asset management software and B2B marketplace. This means by 2026, if we can capture just 2% of the global serviceful market, it's a $10 billion opportunity. As a team, we have over 30 years of combined experience 
deploying digital transformation and B2B SaaS solutions across multiple regions. So we're not only an experienced team, but we also have the network to make this happen. In just a few months, we've been able to onboard three paying customers, were accepted into the AB InBev Incubator Program, and just launched our first feature last week. And we're only 74 days away from our full V1 product launch. But in order to continue this progress, we need your help. We're currently seeking a $1 million seed round to continue our product development roadmap, as well as build our rockstar team, first starting serving customers in Singapore, then moving to Southeast Asia and beyond. So whether you're an investor, a sustainability partner, or a business, you should join us in not only doing good, but doing better with Found and Seek. Thank you. Svested wants to empower founders with advisory, implementation, and automation to enable them to better utilize their employee stock options. Casper Pay will tell you how they plan to take away multiple pain points in this category. Hi, my name is Casper, and I'm here to present to you Svested, where we empower founders to leverage on ESOP for growth. Employee Stock Option Plan, or ESOP for short, is a very powerful tool and a key cog in startup ecosystem, but is often overlooked and underutilized. Over the past years, many founders have shared that managing ESOP is a big challenge and had reached out for help. Contrary to popular belief, ESOP is worth a lot of money. With the maturing of the startup ecosystem, we see that the investment amount has increased 55 times from a mere $149 million in 2010 to $8.2 billion last year. Translating that value, we have at least $3.3 billion worth of ESOP in the ecosystem. 2021 is expected to be another record-breaking year. There are many benefits of ESOP. Studies have shown that ESOP reduces turnover by up to 75%, cash conservation of up to 25%, employees also have 2.2 times more in their retirement account, and it empowers a sense of pride and ownership in the company. Although companies are required to set up their ESOP upon the completion of their fundraising, this process is often overlooked. Hesitation arises from a lack of knowledge, the cost involved, and also there's no localized information as what's available is US-centric. This results in delays in talent acquisitions, broken promises to early employees. That's where Svested comes in. In Svested, we provide a full suite of service from 1. Helping founders to understand and set up their ESOP 2. Digital onboarding 3. Real-time tracking and employee dashboard and most importantly, tackling the liquidity issues by facilitating transactions. Since May this year, we have 30 companies on our platform and have completed three advisory services. The total valuation on board is in excess of $300 million. We are more than just ESOP, as we have started to develop cap table management and simulation system to bring all equity issues under a single platform. Next, we will provide fundraising support, investor matching, and liquidity. The team is formed by myself, Casper, with 13 years of experience, two exits, and Marcus, who is the co-founder of The Basement Cafe, as well as the president of Age Singapore. Svested has received a strong validation as we close US $1 million in total funding within just the first month of our operations. Our ask for this demo day is simple. We want to help more founders to understand, set up, and manage their ESOP and cap table. Two, we want to explore collaborations with VCs, accelerators, COPSEC, and other stakeholders in the ecosystem. Together with all our stakeholders, let's leverage on ESOP to supercharge the startup ecosystem. Thank you. The next team is from the DeFi space. 
Alpha Impact is a non-custodial trading and asset management platform. They help crypto enthusiasts learn the strategies of top traders. Here to tell you more about it is Hayden Hughes. Hi, my name is Hayden Hughes. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Alpha Impact. Now to get started, let's talk a little bit about social media. What's now known as Zuckerberg's law tells us that social is the most important trend and that the users share twice the amount today that they did one year ago. Now, social is changing how we interact with each other. We used to get gaming videos from the PlayStation Network, we used to get the news from the TV, and we used to do trading and other things on places like E-Trade and other forums. Now, the value of, of networks has become the interaction between the participants in those networks. So there's a lot of validation for this problem use case. eToro has become the market leader in copy trading. Their valuation is over $10 billion. Reddit has over 100,000 crypto posts every single day. TradingView has over 10,000 crypto contributors. Binance has become the world leader in crypto exchange with over $30 billion in trading volume. But there are problems. eToro is prohibitively expensive even to make a deposit, and it's difficult to find a trader that suits your individual trading style. For example, NFT tokens, Bitcoin, ESG tokens, whatever Elon is tweeting about. Reddit has um, an amazing amount of detail, but it's totally anonymous, and it's been associated with scam projects again and again and again. TradingView is a beautiful tool for technical analysis and charts, but there's no trading functionality. And Binance does have that trading functionality, but it's confusing for first-time users. And Binance has had some reputational issues and has been accused of wrongdoing by many different governments around the world. So what is our solution? We're building a social media network for crypto traders, backed by a trader's real trading history. Our business model is simple. We help our users to copy a top trader and execute trades uh, from their own exchange account. We charge the user a fee to execute that trade, and we share that fee with the top trader. We've had great traction so far, and our impact token is backed by some of the largest and most reputable financial institutions, both in crypto and in traditional finance. We have 2.25 million USD in cash on hand, and we feel really great about our runway so far. We've got 3,000 signups for our beta product, which is now live, and we have a team of 10, including myself, full-time right here in Singapore. So I don't have time to get into it in this uh, short format. Feel free to message me after. But our operating activity is exempt from current crypto regulations here in Singapore. And that analysis is very recent from our legals. So a little bit about us. My name is Hayden. I'm the CEO. I'm legally trained. This is my fourth startup with one exit. I've had uh, leadership roles at some of the top crypto institutions in uh, crypto. And my co-founder, Austin, spent 15 years in traditional capital markets, working for JP Morgan and Macquarie Bank, where he led a team of 20 building financial systems. We're seeking traders and customers to join us on our journey, and we're open to raising up to 1.7 million in equity financing. We see this as a winner takes most scenario, where the amount of runway we have, if we could increase that, we can go to market faster and become the market leaders even quicker. Thank you so much. And remember, please click to schedule a time to chat. Thank you. We all need some fizz in our lives. Enter Soda, an AI-powered people discovery platform for professionals to meet in person. Soda's matching algorithm is built upon a rich history of documented social interactions with feedback loops and machine learning capabilities. Zabrina Chu will show you how it all works. Hi, my name is Zabrina and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Soda, your social radar. Finding communities to grow with is hard, even though it's so essential for support and a sense of well-being. As working professionals, we're juggling different priorities, interests, and schedules. Whew, it's a lot to keep up with, and we don't have a lot of time. Worse, the pandemic has shrunk our circles by 200 persons on average, and we're spending more time working from home. You see, social media isn't great at keeping us together. That's why five in eight millennial professionals have tried hacking together their own solutions to stay meaningfully connected, using things like spreadsheets and note-taking apps. More than half of those have given up. 
Soda is an app that helps people find their communities easily, identifying active shared interests and surfacing opportunities to meaningfully connect. It's a smarter, simpler way to stay connected. We're all about meaningful engagement. For example, content is created around interest-specific verticals to boost discovery of like minds and create opportunity for deeper conversations. And we're not about big public forums. That's why Huddled, our second engine, brings people together into small intimate groups for real-time immersive interactions, human-to-human -human connections the way they were meant to be. Now, because time is so precious, we built Soda to be more than seven times more streamlined than any social network out there, and the community excitement shows. Since our beta launch barely four weeks ago, we've had almost 100 huddles being hosted, users spending more than 30 minutes per day on the app, and 27% week-on-week user growth. That's so exciting. And the social media market is going to triple in the next four years, giving us a new $206 billion opportunity to capture. And with 11 million U.S. millennials leaving the world's largest social network in just over a span of two years, it shows that the market really wants a different kind of social network. Soda is where busy millennial professionals around the world will go to connect and stay connected. My co-founder and I have a diverse set of experiences across gaming, startups, thought leadership platforms, deep tech, and AIML. Most importantly, we're both passionate community builders and micro-influencers who have collectively built communities of more than 10,000 people. And I'm so proud of what the team has achieved in just three months. We've built and launched a fully functional, beautiful iOS app in beta, and we just shipped our Android beta as well. And we're only just getting started. In the next 12 months, we're building core systems, mechanics, and integrations to enable a future of creation, collaboration, and community. So if you're excited to be part of a platform that will be home to millions and millions of people and their communities, we're currently fundraising and seeking strategic advisors. My email is right there. Let's talk. Hi, I'm Rufus Sorsa, and I'm the program director of Antler Southeast Asia. After each pitch, please click on the Getting Touch button for the startup you would like to connect with. You can provide feedback, express interest in investing, collaborating, or becoming their next customer. The next team is SciSense. Their platform automates information security programs, allowing companies to focus on building secure businesses. Carlos Leva will share more. Hi, my name is Carlos, and I'm one of the co-founders of SciSense, the first of its kind platform for companies to manage all their cybersecurity in one place. Because of recent hacks, we've seen a global push to enforce security. Fines for cyber breaches are over 10% of your turnover. And studies show that consumers won't do business with you if they don't trust your security. This is making enterprises relentless with security requirements for suppliers. It is clear that good security is mandatory for digital companies, and we need to stop treating it as just a compliance exercise. But good security is hard. There are thousands of possible security configurations in today's technologies hundreds of cyber tools available, and dozens of global laws and regulations applicable to your company from day one. Because of this, security can quickly become expensive and ineffective. Enterprises have the resources to throw at it, but startups and SMEs have been left on their own and then feel the pain of the added demand. We think this is super unfair and a load of crap, which is why SciSense is making good cybersecurity easy and accessible for organizations of all sizes. Our platform simplifies it by monitoring your technology and providing you with actionable steps on how to secure your organization in just a few clicks. We keep track of everything for you, so you can focus on developing incredible products and leading a successful business. Hear it from our customers who are seeing the benefits of having a clear sense of their security posture and saving thousands of dollars in consultancy fees. And this is with just our MVP. We are releasing our version 0.1 this July, and we are launching version 1 in October. Thanks to our affordable SaaS platform, for as little as $500 a month, you can get insights to improve your security posture and share documentation to build trust with stakeholders. We're not just another compliance tool. We legit care about removing decision overload from your teams. 
As we productize InfoSec, we also help the fast-growing SME security market of over $43 billion. We're bringing decades of enterprise security experience to this market, backed by a stellar set of advisors who are top leaders in the industry. We've pushed through the pain of bad risk and cyber tools for years, so digital companies in the future won't have to. Imagine that all their startups you've seen until today didn't have a bank, and they place all their investments under the mattress. That is the current state of cybersecurity for SMEs. Our vision is to disrupt the industry and bring enterprise-grade tech to them in a useful and meaningful way. If you are a digital company and you've been putting off looking at cyber, reach out to us ASAP. We are here for you, and in less than two weeks, our platform will get you up to speed before you end up in the news for the wrong reasons. We are currently focused on building our product and serving our customers, and we'll be raising funds later this year. If you're an investor and are excited about what we're working on, we'd love to talk to you. Thank you and stay safe. Next up, we have Quibi, a platform that facilitates online STEM activities for students around the world. The virtual platform aims to become the global destination for STEM educational content. Here to tell you more is Vivek Sitharaman. Hi, we're Quibi, and we're taking hands-on learning online. Across the globe, there's a new trend in education where kids are learning by doing, making stuff with their hands. It's the best way for kids to pick up STEM and 21st century skills like creativity, problem solving, and collaboration. That's why governments and leading curricula are mandating its adoption, causing a huge demand for STEM kits from schools and parents. But STEM kits remain very expensive. And even in the middle class, most parents just can't afford them. And schools need space and funding to create dedicated maker spaces. So the real problem is that 95% of our children have no access to any form of hands-on experiences. What if we could change that? What if there was a way to make hands-on learning available at a planetary scale, accessible to every student in the world, cost-effectively and with zero friction? Think about that for a second. And this next piece, the global online tutoring market is set to explode at a whopping $130 billion in just the next four years. And keep in mind, there is just no online alternative to this physical hands-on approach. So you see, this is the next billion dollar category. Coming from a background of creating virtual interactive worlds, we are taking the proven makerspace models at schools and delivering it direct to consumers through playful Minecraft-like experiences. And that's what we're building. Meet Quibi, a virtual makerspace where kids and teachers can engage in hands-on building experiences just like the real world, but online. With access to the world's largest set of building blocks and the ability to control each one of them with code, our kids can make their creations truly come alive. Our vision is to build a universe where kids learn to solve real-world problems using the power of STEM and eventually begin to think of themselves as, as true creators. We're moving fast, co-creating our MVP with inputs from over 150 passionate STEM teachers and some of the brightest young students. And now, these teachers are super excited to be able to facilitate hands-on learning sessions for the first time ever in a completely online setting. We go live in September with 750 kids. Boy, we can't wait to see what they'll build. Our team built and scaled India's first online 3D interior design platform. We've built multi-million dollar categories from the ground up, and we've built fun through award-winning games across mobile and VR. We are the right team to build this business. If you're someone who wants to make a real impact on education, and sees this as a massive market opportunity, we should talk. I'm Vivek, co-founder and CEO at Quibi. Thank you.
Bill Gates says that everyone needs a coach, regardless of their profession. Coaching platform in aid agrees with that and wants to democratize coaching to everyone by leveraging on technology to create personalized journeys. Ayush Ahuja will tell you more about Inaid. Hi, I'm Ayush, co-founder of Inaid. Over the course of our careers, we all face challenges. My co-founder Melvin and I struggled with keeping our teams motivated on new responsibilities we had no experience with. Not knowing who to turn to, we learned to live with these challenges, sometimes thriving, but often becoming unhappy and disengaged over time. Unfortunately, this isn't rare. All of you would have seen other leaders around you struggle to keep their employees engaged. Companies address this today by spending $370 billion on training annually. But 75% employees say training isn't effective. It focuses on content rather than context and are too infrequent to lead to any lasting behavior change. That's roughly $270 billion wasted or available for more effective engagements. Introducing Inaid. We're a digital coaching platform that helps companies accelerate their growth by nurturing, supporting, and transforming their people through the power of coaching. Inaid works in a few ways. We partner with progressive companies to match their employees with the right certified coaches, use our AI coach to guide users through goal-based journeys of learning content, custom exercises, and personalized nudges, and let companies track the health and measure ROI of their coaching programs. Now is the right time to build a coaching startup for Asia. With higher awareness and demand among companies and employees, personal development platforms will be an $8.4 billion opportunity. All of you know of BetterUp, the largest coaching platform, but there doesn't exist something similar specifically for Asia, where just four markets are worth $3.1 billion today. Over the last three months, we've hustled hard to build our product and partner with 50 plus coaches. What's been most encouraging is that every single company we've spoken with realizes the power of coaching, with some nominating employees for our beta, proving real need and demand. We've had interest from 100 plus users, facilitated 50 paid coaching sessions, and clocked $9,500 in sales even before launching our product. A combination of Melvin's product experience and my cross-functional background makes us the right team to build Inaid. We know that each of you would coach every single employee in your organization if only you had the time to. So why not scale that impact with Inaid? If you believe in our vision, have a team or portfolio company to nurture, or if you'd like to participate in our upcoming seed round, we'd love to set up some time to speak. Thank you. Next, we have Paid. As a financial well-being platform, it enables employees to receive part of their salary on demand and have a live view of their earnings. Here to tell you more is Justin Kong. Hi, I'm Justin, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Paid. And we give you your money when you need it. Our target markets are Malaysia and Singapore, given that a large percentage of the populations live paycheck to paycheck, have little in the way of savings, and struggle to access credit in an affordable and consistent manner. Currently, options limited, with family, friends, employers, and colleagues, asking money is taboo, and often not feasible. Bank loans can take up to seven days, and money lenders are very expensive. With paid, we work with employers to provide their employees access to their earned salary for a small flat fee, irrespective of the amount. No hidden fees, no late charges. At the end of the month, we collect money from the employer. In essence, we transfer credit risk from an employee to the employer to make credit affordable for those who need it the most. Employees are all pre-onboarded and will be able to register and withdraw in less than a minute. And as an employer, why should you care? Providing early access to wages has proven to improve productivity, reduce stress, attract and retain talent. We provide data-driven insights on employee financial well-being, 
all in a fully customizable, automated solution funded by us. We just completed our pilot in Singapore with six companies, where 35% of the employees registered for our app, and each user withdrew an average of $235 two and a half times a month. Employees have used the money for loan repayments, bills, supporting family members who are in between jobs, and remitting money home. We have launched in two countries with a strong pipeline of 50,000 employees, and we've also agreed two partnerships giving us access to a further 80,000 employees, which will go live in September. And our goal is to develop a holistic financial well-being employee benefit with savings, microloans, insurance, and financial education as our next products. Earned Wage Access has been getting a lot of investor interest in Southeast Asia with some fairly large seed raises in the past six months in Indonesia and in Vietnam. With the model highly localized, it is unlikely that our foreign competitors will enter our core markets where there are no significant players. Davresh and I are the co-founders. Between us, we have finance, sales, and operational experience in fintech. Paul has joined us from Waitstream, and Abila was previously head of partnerships at funding societies. Nav is our advisor who founded and exited two companies in the same space. We have raised over half a million dollars to date, and we're growing quickly. Given our current trajectory and traction, We'll be raising our seed round in a few months from now. And for employers that feel that we can be a benefit to your employees or partners who would like to offer earned wage access to your client base, please do get in touch. Thank you. Next up, we have Pseudo Hero a marketplace that instantly connects software developers to experts through contextual analytics under innovative platform. Chris Chandler will tell you more. APIs are a powerful business enabler connecting the company with its partners to facilitate transactions in a fraction of the time it would take to do by other means. And according to Programmable Web, the use of APIs have grown by more than tenfold over the last decade. At TripAdvisor, where I was Director of Global Business Development, I relied heavily on API-powered partnerships to drive business at scale, but in that same role, I also witnessed the frustration with delays in onboarding new partners due to limited support resources. To manage the deluge of incoming support requests, most companies rely on email ticketing systems, but those tools don't resolve the delays in integration. Other companies attempt to augment their support staff with a developer forum so customers can help each other, but the majority of questions in these forums simply go unanswered. With Pseudohero, we've built two products to speed up API integrations, Expert Pool and QuickSolve. With Expert Pool, customers can share their requirements to shortlist and vet experts to build an on-demand support team in no time. And to facilitate support requests, our QuickSolve interface makes it easy to log a support issue in detail. And through a matching algorithm, be connected to the best available expert for assistance in a matter of minutes to solve the issue immediately and at minimal cost. QuickSolve is live today, and we found that we can solve issues in as little as 15 minutes as compared to days with other solutions. We validated a model with freelance experts across 20 countries and built out a database of over 12,000 experts. Lastly, we've begun working with companies like Brick here in Singapore to run a pilot program to validate the efficacy of our service. Companies can easily integrate QuickSolve into their support infrastructure for free, effectively removing antiquated ticketing systems and forums, and simply pay for the time experts have spent assisting their developers. For an additional monthly fee, we offer a service level agreement and provide valuable insights generated from usage of the platform. The market for freelance technical work today stands at $99 billion globally. By aggregating a marketplace of freelance experts into a comprehensive support solution, we can generate revenues in excess of $100 million with just 5,000 SaaS customers. Our team is uniquely positioned to solve this problem, having built marketplace businesses, managed API programs, and scaled up operations at both established companies as well as startups. With 4.6 billion people online, more than two-thirds of the world's population now banked, and changes in attitudes towards remote work in 2020, the door is opening to a global, distributed, and remote base of knowledge workers. Our entry into this space with a developer support solution is just the beginning. As a first step towards that vision, 
We're seeking funding to run a series of pilot programs and continue development as we work to reach product market fit before focusing on growth. Next up, we have Sellerlot, a multi-channel e-commerce platform that enables brands, distributors, and merchants to centralize their marketplace accounts across Southeast Asia. To tell you all about their solutions, we have Sandro Diazzi. I'm Sandro, and welcome to Sellerlot. Count the zeros. Yes, there's 11 zeros. $4.8 trillion. This is the size of global e-commerce today. 100, 50, 20 years ago, we could have never imagined that e-commerce would take over the world and become one of the largest industries globally. But let's take a step back and look at how commerce has evolved in the past few centuries. We went from direct selling to catalogs in 200 years. We then went to department stores in 60 years and to online selling in half of that time. The speed of change has gotten faster and faster exponentially with every move. So what's next? We believe it's borderless commerce. Of the hundreds of startups that you see every, every day, services, technology, information, capital, everything is borderless. Then why isn't e-commerce borderless? Put yourself in the shoes of a brand that wants to expand abroad. You need to understand well the local market, its dynamics, the purchasing behavior, and know the ins and outs of every single platform. You also need to set up a dedicated team and infrastructure, which is a lengthy and costly process. You need to figure out by yourself all the pieces of the puzzle which is extremely time consuming. In today's world, a brand needs to go country by country, platform by platform, and organize their own logistics, analytics, advertising, and so on. This is very inefficient. With Sellerlot, a brand just needs to understand our software to access new countries and new platforms all at once. Through APIs, data science, and machine learning, we can centralize and optimize selling cross-border in a platform agnostic way. Any brand can upload their product and their listings will appear across global platforms. We're starting with European fashion and lifestyle brands to Asia. We know these brands. We have access to all their distributors to our network. We're new, but we move very fast. Our first MVP is up and running. The market is so hungry for this that we already have clients with 70,000 SKUs and over $100,000 in revenues. And we're just getting started. So this is us. I've worked in technology all my life, both as an operator and as an investor. My partner, Dejan, has dedicated 20 years to e-commerce development before e-commerce was even cool. And we have incredible advisors that are actively helping us and supporting us from day zero. E-commerce isn't borderless yet, but we're here to change it. We started raising $1 million a few weeks ago. We have 70% of the round committed, and we aim to close in the next two weeks. If you share with us our grand vision, and if you want to be there with us through our journey for the next two, five, 10 years, come talk to us and let's see how we can partner. Thank you. Next up, we have Slab, a platform to enable game developers acquire users and revenue. Hi, I'm Anand, co-founder of Slab. For the last seven years, I've been CEO and director of a leading games ad tech company based in the Netherlands, where we worked with large game studios with their marketing strategy and growing their audiences. Let me introduce you to my co-founder, Sebastian. Hey, I'm Sebastian, co-founder of Slab. I have worked for over 20 years in the games industry. I launched some of the earliest web games in Germany, founded a few game startups, including a mobile game studio, a games analytics platform, and also a machine learning solution for customer care. Anand and I have been colleagues and good friends for several years and have together worked with all parts of the game's value chain. Our startup was born out of our shared and personal experiences of working with the significant challenges of games distribution and marketing. Many game developers believe the path to success is very straightforward. Launch the app, maybe deal with minor issues until they figure out player engagement and detain Nirvana. Fantastic! But unfortunately, most of the developers fail somewhere in between. The developers not only have to develop content players are willing to pay for, but often they underestimate the time and work required in juggling between continuous product optimization, dealing with all technical issues while also dealing with distribution. 
Current solutions available for developers to get their games distributed on a massive scale are very time-consuming, expensive and confusing. And Slab allows developers to completely offload this entire resource draining function to us. With Slab, developers can now focus all their energy on making their products better and increasing revenues. We fully automate and optimize continuously the end-to-end -end distribution workflows for apps. We have already delivered phenomenal results to our early customers. Before being onboarded, this European studio was averaging 150 installs a week. Within a week on Slab, their installs jumped to 1,800 on a weekly basis, a rise of over 1,100%. We're targeting a large and ever-expanding market. Most people know about the games, which are at the tip of the iceberg. But 80% of the 8 million developers are small teams churning out millions of games on iOS and Android in over 150 countries. And this is our target market. We have grown significantly in the last six weeks since receiving $100,000 in pre-seed investment from Antler. We now have a team of 10 across Southeast Asia and Amsterdam, an MVP and few games on board. We now also have some key partners in Singapore. We are looking for an investment of $400,000, as well as advisors, which will give us runway until late next year. Our next milestones are onboarding over 500 games by June 2022, fine-tuning our algorithms, and adding more sophistication to our platform. We believe this is just the beginning for us as we fuel the games infrastructure to become the marketing and distribution standard to millions of games and apps. Thank you, and, and we welcome any questions, any questions you may have. have. Knife is a deep tech enterprise that is transforming the way users experience the internet. With speed, processing, and a better user experience in mind, Knife's co-founder, Nida, will tell you all about what they have been building. Knife is transforming how the world experiences the internet. I'm Nida, a founder at Knife. Every household today has many devices, a million devices worldwide, and a billion devices tomorrow. But each of these devices have their own challenges. They need a faster response time, a local computation, but a local device computer is impractical. Today, these devices communicate with a remote static cloud. Data goes from one location to another, computes, and then comes back. This leads to capacity, cost, and latency issues. Imagine if the cloud were to move closer to the devices in form of an edge server, Response time would be really fast and only the needed data would go back to the cloud. Well, this is what is happening today. Edge servers are mushrooming due to 5G telco rollout and infrastructure providers adding them. But each of these servers have their own make related to cost, performance and need. Imagine what a nightmare it is for a device to decide its closest endpoint. This is where Knife comes into play. Knife is building a global public edge cloud for a faster, more powerful internet experience. We do this by aggregating infrastructure providers, by moving applications closer, keeping in mind customer and application needs of latency, cost, performance and data. And to our customers, the larger ones with many devices and many locations, we have a license-based subscription model. To our smaller ones, we have a pay-as-you-go metering model charging for API, compute, and storage. Edge landscape has been growing exponentially. It will be 50 billion by 2030. Telco rollouts and more low latency use cases are fueling this growth. Today, there are a few players globally who are trying to solve a similar problem. But we have a head start in APAC and that's a ticket to the world. So far, we've raised 150K. With access to enterprise partners, infrastructure partners, edge communities, we now have access to 700 edge servers all across the world. We have co-created and completed two pilots, and we've moved on to our paid pilot pipeline. A largest one being that of Smart Railways at Barcelona. We have a team of seasoned professionals from startup, enterprise, business, technology, 
infrastructure and telecom backgrounds looking at taking this forward we are raising 1.5 million to increase our footprint and increase our revenue news of 5g rollout is spreading like wildfire we are in the right place at the right time if you would like to learn more about nice and be a part of this transformative revolutionary journey then do get in touch nice is building the future of real time computing thank you Eteru is the first one-stop social discovery marketplace for F&B in Indonesia. This is where users engage with food videos and authentic content. Christine Savendi will tell you about this unique platform. Hi, we are Eteru and we help small kitchens benefit from user content. I'm Chris. So, if you're in Indonesia, you've probably eaten a lot of rice bowls this year. That is because most of the 5 million MSME food businesses in Indonesia have a problem building awareness for their brand, which is why you'll probably order that rice bowl because you will not have a better idea as to what you can have for dinner tonight. When my partner Riz and I first started talking to kitchens, we realized that we were seeing a lot of DIY marketing effort on the part of these kitchens, everything from homemade flyers to influencer paid promotions, because here is an untapped truth about the F&B market, right? Small kitchens are spending money on getting their brands known. In the past three years, there has been a spike in content and influencer marketing spend on the part of micro F&B brands. The problem is that cost is high and ROI is low. Our solution is a social engagement marketplace for F&B, where anyone can do two things: discover and purchase food via social content. In our app, users shop and browse viral food items. They collect points and rewards and they can also monetize from their food content. That means that let's say if later you are going to get a wagyu cheese rice bowl and you uploaded a video of it on the Etro app and the next day I see the melting cheese in your video and it makes me order that rice bowl, you make a small commission of the sale that your content generates. The truth is that over 60% of our kitchen partners have spent anything between $100 to $350 on influencer marketing in the past quarter alone. The problem is that influencer marketing is no longer seen as a trustworthy form of customer testimonial. With the Etro app, what we're basically doing is digitizing an authentic form of word of mouth marketing. We have two revenue streams. We generate a 5% profit from food sales and we generate a 20% margin from our B2B Martech model, where kitchen partners solicit for paid content via our database of foodies. In the past 3 months since launch we have acquired almost 20,000 users with a DAU that increases week to week as well as onboarded over 1200 F&B brands. We've also gotten unsolicited press, initiated partnerships with Gojek, Shopee, Oyo, Rumi and more and we are building a feature to be the comprehensive lead generation content aggregator for online delivery. You see, the thing is that the traditional food discovery platform basically only tells you that the Italian place near you isn't so bad but we believe by a shopping life snack pass in the US and Xiao Hongshu that there is a real trend towards socially immersive commerce our goal is to be the biggest social recommendation engine for F&B in Southeast Asia serving millions of kitchens from Indonesia to Vietnam my partner Riz Wanto is actually a part-time entrepreneur as well as a mobile tech pioneer in Indonesia and my own background is in consumer tech product building. We raised our pre-seed with East Ventures and Antler and are starting to raise our 1.5 billion dollar seed round next month. So, if you would like to talk more, please get in touch. Wow. And that brings us to the end of this demo day. The opportunities to innovate and positively impact the world are bigger than ever, and the leading companies of tomorrow are being built today. If you want to be part of the future and build a company, there is no better time than now. Our next program is starting in September 2021. If you're interested in joining our platform and building your next company with Antler Southeast Asia, apply through our website www.antler.co If you would like to get to know more about Antler, 
investing and working or partnering with us, get in touch via Singapore at antler.co. From all of the Antler Southeast Asia team here in Singapore, thank you for joining us. Thank you.